Thanks for joining me on this journey. Uh, since we're stuck inside, uh, I think this will be a neat experience for, for all of us. I know it will be for, for my family and myself. We're going to read through the Gospel of Mark together. Now, why Mark? Why the Gospel? Well, I, th I think during Lent it's always good to read through one of the Gospels. Mark is an especially interesting one. It is short. It's the shortest of the Gospels. It's action-packed. And it's the earliest of the Gospels to be written. In fact, uh, the author of Luke and the author of Matthew uh, use Mark as their outline as they put together their own Gospel stories. You'll notice as we start with chapter 1 that uh, Mark does not have a birth story. He just starts with a declaration. And then he hops right into the action. So let's see what my family has to say about this first chapter uh, I'm interested to hear what they have to say, and I hope that you join in uh, by writing your comments uh, below as well, so we can all join in this conversation together. Eight stuck out to me a lot because it says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so it's like saying that you can be baptized, but you want to be baptized by God because he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Mine was more of a question, and I asked Maddie earlier, but we didn't come up with an answer. But when it says that they <laughs> that, that's are... That's up for argument, sorry. <laughs> I came up with an answer, but she didn't like it. Yeah, when it says that they're casting out the demons, I don't know what that means when it says demon. Like, in today's world, what would that be? I think it's like curing a mental health disease and they just didn't know how to handle mental health back then so they like saw that it was like demons because they would act strange and they would have no explanation for it because they don't know what that would be you know so instead of like trying to put a name to it they would just call it in the terms that they would have saw it as as demons maybe because you're then asking if it would just be straight up demons. Like. Well, and it says, be, he said he drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. And so that's why I didn't know what it meant. Well, this is like, this is written by like humans. It's a, it's a story. So like, don't, you don't have to take everything literally. So like, they could have exaggerated that, you know what I mean? I, that's what I think, I don't know. I don't think that they were actual demons, you know what I mean? Like you're kind of suggesting. Well, no, because I know they had talked about Jesus healing people before that because he, he healed somebody with a fever. Um, mm -hmm. And then it goes on to talk about the demons. So that's why I didn't know if the demon was like a sickness, if it was an illness, if it was... Well, what would you say, Matt? What was your answer? I just had a really good answer, but I forgot what I was about to say. Give what was her answer earlier? I said it could one? be like, oh, it could be like sin and temptation like, together. Okay. That's another good one. Yeah, well, that, when she said that one, it made a little bit more sense. Oh. Her answer made more sense? <laughs> what well, was wrong with my answer? <laughs> it's like... You know. Well, no. Can yeah. someone read what their verse 17 says in their Bible? Follow me and I will make you fish for people. Okay, just making sure I got that. Mine says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Okay. Yours is wrong. Because mine says, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. So I got really just like what? <laughs> because that sounds weird. It, or? Just, it just sounded kind of weird. Fishing for fishing people. Fishing for people. It's just like not a common phrase anymore. And so I was just like, fishing for people. I guess that would mean that they were talking They were about trying to go find like disciples. Right. Right. To show people about that. <coughs> oh, Maddie did ask what leprosy was. <coughs> yes, I did. Because I don't know what leprosy it's is. Big chicken pox. <coughs> just because you have the coronavirus doesn't mean we stop loving you or taking care of you. And that it doesn't mean that there isn't people that are willing to help you. Because, like, another thing that I, like, stood out to me was that um, the man with leprosy said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And then Jesus moved with compassion, reached out and touched him. I am willing. 
he said. So I just thought that was cool because just because you have a disease doesn't mean people aren't out there that are willing to help you. So people are still willing to help you no matter what disease you have. Well, what I think that means in the coronavirus time is that we've seen a big rise in panic and a lot of stores being cleaned out. I think that a lot of people who are cleaning out the stores aren't necessarily the ones who need to be clearing out the stores just yet because they're not the ones who need to be self-isolated completely like the elderly are. I've seen a lot of like articles on like a lot of old people not being able to like stock up and they need to and they ha keep having to like go out and get stuff because they need to self quarantine but they don't have all the essentials but like youngerish people can like kind of hold back on like wiping out the store clean like they have been you know not saying that they also need, don't need to self quarantine but instead of like wiping out the store you know like we have been we need to like make sure that everyone can get a piece you know instead of only worrying about ourselves quarantined because everyone is in need of quarantine, you know? Well, you got to hear some of my family's favorite uh, parts of Mark 1. My favorite verse didn't come up, but in this action-packed chapter, and there is so much that is in this chapter, I love verse 35, where the Gospel writer makes a point of telling us that early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, went to a deserted place, and prayed. There was so much going on, and yet Jesus took the time that he needed to make sure to take time with God each and every day. That's, a, that's an important point, I think, that the Gospel writer wanted to make sure that we heard. What did you take from Mark chapter 1? Please let us hear what you think down in the comments below and join the discussion. And then I'll see you tomorrow for Chapter 2.